All right, we are back for another Conscious Builder Live. And today we have a treat because we have two for the price of one. Uh, we have Ashley Marinko and Mark Willie on the show. Ashley is the program associate and Mark is a volunteer for the Illinois Green Alliance Org, which is a chapter of the United States Green Building Council. And today we are specifically, well, we're gonna dig into a few things. Uh, we're already getting started before we hit record and work through the usual technical difficulties that come with <laughs> these calls these days. Uh, but uh, we're gonna get into the Green Build House Tour uh, 2020. So maybe before we get into it, uh, Ashley, I'll start with you. If you wanna share a little Little bit more about the organization and what you do there and then we can hop over to Mark and he can kind of do the same. Yeah for sure. First of all thanks Casey for having us on the show. Um, really appreciate it and we're really excited to join you guys to talk a little bit about what we're doing and green building in general because um, obviously it's a passionate passion about for all of us. Um, so I am Ashley. I'm the program associate at Illinois Green Alliance, which is a nonprofit in the Chicagoland area um, that's focused on greening Chicago and Illinois in general, um, but specifically Chicago. And we do that through different educational events um, and different programs and uh, working on policies in Illinois um, and stuff like that, as well as networking events and trying to really just connect the green building um, industry and professionals together. Um, one of the ways that we do that and promote green building and education around it is through the Green Belt Home Tour, which is a normally a two day in person event. Um, but the event this year looks a little bit different with um, everything happening in our world and stuff like that. So, um, but the Green Belt Home Tour is one of the ways that we promote green building throughout Illinois and now with it going virtual this year throughout anyone who wants to look. <laughs> yes now i can attend i don't have to travel right so <laughs> i was gonna say like throughout the u.s but you guys are over here in canada so um yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's great. I'll get in. I want to get into and understand kind of what you're doing a little bit. But before we do that, uh, Mark, share a little bit about your volunteer. So uh, share a little bit about why you got involved and why you continue to be involved because you've been involved for quite some time now, I understand. Yeah. Uh, thanks for having me, Casey. Um, I've been volunteering. I think uh, I think I learned last year, uh, 16 years now with Illinois Green Alliance. Um, so I volunteer first and foremost because the staff of IGA is incredible and they do outreach to about 15,000 members in Chicago. And uh, when you have that kind of energy and that kind of uh, drive to change the conversation in a city uh, for green energy efficiency and sustainability, you just want to hop on that wagon and get in there. <laughs> so um, they're wonderful people. And uh, we, we tend to meet, you know, one or two times a week. Um, now, virtually, we're actually meeting more, which is really exciting and everyone's embracing it. Um, and so I do it to transform our built environment and, uh, and to make sure that all future buildings, both uh, commercial and residential, are as healthy and comfortable as can be. So we need more voices and uh, I need a better voice, but we need more voices. <laughs> uh, that's great. So what's happening with the virtual? Like, um, how is that being set up? And how have you navigated that? Because I'm sure it hasn't been easy. Yeah, for sure. Especially with Illinois Green Alliance, since we put on about 75 programs a year. So uh, wow. we Complete, and they're all in person. We don't really ever do web events because like I said, it's, it's a lot of networking. Um, we want to get people together and people talking and stuff like that. So switching over to a virtual setting has been very interesting. Um, but now we like to call ourselves Zoom pros because <laughs> Zoom, now we've done a bunch of different um, events on Zoom since March um, and We've the home four have already had two and then two more. So after that, it will be, you know, a whole web series um, on Zoom and everything. So it's definitely been interesting, but we have seen actually a lot more participation on our webinars than we have in person. In person, we get like 50 to maybe 100 people at our events, but now we've been getting like 100 to 200 people 
um, registering and showing up and stuff like that. Our events, you know, were kind of like sticking around like 150 people. So we were really excited about that because obviously we want to get the word out as much as possible. So um, it's been really awesome and, and been able to like cut costs of events because we're not paying for certain things anymore. So hoping that that can help different community groups and people um, attend our, our different webinars and stuff. So it's been interesting and like we talked about earlier, just technical um, issues with being on Zoom and using the computer is always a hard thing, but it's been really cool to have people outside of Chicago um, not only attend, but be able to speak on webinars and be able to connect with people further. So how is the, the tour, like if you're doing, so tomorrow is the Passive House Day, right? So uh, how is the tour going to be done through those? And I think this is technically the third day because you've done the all electric homes, which some of them are passive house, right? And uh, the deep energy retrofits, I believe was the second one. Um, so how does a tour work? Is it through Zoom or is it is it done another way? Yeah, so it's actually through Zoom. And um, that was something that it took a while for us to kind of figure out how you take an in-person tour and make it virtual because um, especially during the summer, people want to get outside and that's kind of the cool part of getting people outside of the green building industry is being able to go and see people's homes and do like kind of a cool weekend event. So what we've been doing now is kind of pushing the visual aspect. So really encouraging people to do videos or do a lot of photos and stuff like that. But we've had about a mixture of um, videos. So people doing videos of their home and walking through and showing all the aspects of their home that they want to talk about, um, as well as showing off, um, doing a presentation and then kind of talking over their presentation that might have a few videos in it, but picture heavy, hopefully, um, is the goal. So our, uh, we've had a mix of that and it's a live presentation. So um, the videos are playing live and uh, people are speaking live and it's all going live and then that's for about an hour and then we have an optional happy half hour at the end for 30 minutes because um, a big part of the tour was to have people talk with the builders and the homeowners and whoever created that home or renovated it um, to ask their personal questions like, hey, I'm thinking about solar. What did you guys do? What were the pros and cons and stuff like that? Right. So we wanted to maintain that kind of like face to face, like ask these pers more personal questions about your home. Um, so we try to keep that through the 30 minutes at the end and, and the, our presenters are in the like chat Q and A and answering questions throughout the whole thing, um, while other people are presenting and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, it's been pretty cool, but obviously still a bit different than, um, an in-person tour. Yeah, that, that, that's great. Um, well, let's, let's, let's show some of those. So I know you have, uh, you can share your screen and Mark can talk. I think you've been through the houses, right? So let's uh, give a, people here who maybe aren't registered yet uh, a reason to register <laughs> and, and join the tour tomorrow. So, so um, the first house we're seeing, uh, Ashley's pulling up on the screen for y'all. Uh, it looks, it looks to, a, to be a new house, right? A, a little bit of a modern flair. Uh, the, the, the fun part about it is this house already existed, right? It was, uh, it was nearly a, a hundred year old, uh, I believe two flat. Uh, and so what they did is they saved the building, right? They, uh, they understood the embodied energy of the materials and, uh, and the foundation was good. And, uh, it happened to have a, a, a front yard, a rear yard and an alley. So very accessible. And uh, the architects went ahead and did the modeling and the, uh, the passive house um, CPHC went ahead and uh, made sure that, that using this house could in fact achieve uh, passive house standards. So the house next door to it, uh, same owner once did a, a lead one of the first lead houses in Chicago. And now this accompanied lot happens to be the first Passive House Institute US uh, home in Chicago. So they, they did have to carve out the basement. Uh, they did European style tilt and turns, uh, insulated uh, the house of course, and um, 
uh, converted it to all electric. It used to be a natural gas, as most homes in Chicago are. Uh, they added some square footage onto the back and uh, gave it all new cladding to, to usher it into its second life. So what, what types of, actually, I'll let you do, you can move maybe on to the second one, and then I'll, I have some questions that uh, are more specific around Passive House in Chicago and, and, and what's happening in that world. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. So um, this next house is by uh, Tom Bassadilly, and uh, he's one of the founders as well uh, for, for Passive House Alliance here in Chicago. And... Uh, so he's been on the tour every single year that Illinois Green has put this on. And uh, this particular home was built off-site. So they, they built this home in a factory and delivered it. Um, you see the solar array. And uh, Tom has done, uh, you asked about Passive House in Chicago, where you will be asking. Tom has done uh, most of the Passive House homes in Chicagoland. And um, he's an architect. And so he, he very much understands craftsmanship. So it's not just about figuring out your energy use and your insulation and providing the health and the comfort, but it's how does that get achieved? And Tom understands uh, that it takes the right contractor and the right team to achieve this so that the end result is that the building occupants get a space they enjoy, a space that's uncomfortable, a space that's healthy. And so you see in this house, it's really unique. There's a, I think this is the right house. I've been to all of his homes multiple times, so I do get it confused. <laughs> so Tom, if I talk about too many of your houses today, that's that's my mistake. But I believe this house has a porch and, uh, and the porch is a all season porch that has a fireplace so that it's separated from the conditioned space of the home. But uh, I, I believe I, I said that right. Uh, but you can see very, very simple finishes, very clean lines. So we might be talking about green, and we might be talking about Passive House specific today through Illinois Green, but it's those finishes that they choose. The home is very well sealed. And so with that comes a great responsibility of selection of materials so that if there happens to be something that off gases, you do not use it. You have to draw the line and say, no, you have to use the correct materials that are resilient, durable, and healthy. So it improves the lives of the people. Right. Uh, and, and that's what we see in this home today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks for sharing your screen, Ashley. Uh, so one of the things that's interesting is when I when we started to learn about passive house and and uh, everything that was happening in that world is passive house was only really taking into consideration the performance of the home, right? It wasn't taken into the consideration. Something that you said earlier was the embodied energy or indoor air quality or anything like that. It was trying to it, it just, unless things have changed and I'm uh, unaware of, it, it focuses on how well does the house perform in the area that is being built, right? So, which to some extent, it misses a big part of what I think is important and what I believe that you, you believe is important as well, hence why you mentioned it. <laughs> um, but I've also realized that people who are thinking passive are also thinking about those things anyways. So it's not something that's really been an issue for, for projects that we've done. Yeah. Um, do you find the same and, um, and what types of levels of like insulation are you having to get to in Chicago? Cause I'm guessing it's different than where we are here. So there's no short answer to what you just said. Um, but it, to respect the time, I'll try to be short. <laughs> um, I believe, I believe originally the people that came up with third party systems, such as the USGBC, Passive House Institute, Passive House Institute US, they had in mind sustainability, health, and comfort, but they needed to have a pass fail uh, entry and they needed to have levels of completion. So while we look at this as the energy, 
and, and you either hit the mark or you don't. I actually like that pass fail method. That's just one level. And depending on which silo, which bubble you're in, I think you bring in a lot more. And so uh, at the end of the day, you're building a house and or, or, or a building. But for the house, some people might really be into, you know, the kitchen and the master bath or the TV room, whatever it is. But when you get to know that client, you get to know uh, there's certain things about them that make them tick. And a lot of times people that buy homes buy them when they're about to have a child or become pregnant in the process. So health is very important. And it just so happens, right? A house that's very well sealed and very well ventilated is healthier. And we never had discussions growing up on what is it like to live in a drafty home? Because we all lived in drafty homes. So it wasn't part of our dialogue but we all knew that that grandma sat in the best chair of the house and your younger cousin sat in the spot where the window was leaking. Right? <laughs> so, so now we're just identifying this as normal conversations. And uh, the fact that we're able to identify it, um, I think it's important because we, we're living in a society that's more and more data driven. So they, they want to know what, what, it, what makes my house different? And what makes that house be purchased? And, and these, these systems allow you to think in that manner because they're kind of removed from what it takes to build, renovate, and maintain a house. They're very removed because we have this, this device called immediate gratification, but it has nothing to do with tradespeople and craftsmanship, right? It has to do with technology. And uh, so people can say, hey, if you buy a passive house and you buy a, a, a lead platinum home, you can look at all these little sensors and you can find out that you need to do something different because something is wrong. So in a way, it's the perfect storm of all these people that wanted a change and all these people that didn't realize it could be better. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's a lot of conversations that I have now is actually people realizing that, that it can be better. <laughs> so I can, I can actually use that. I don't, I don't talk to people about cost saving measures anymore. It's about comfort, uh, improving measures, right? Because right. then when I can say, yeah, that cold house there, that cold room over your garage. Uh, yeah, we can solve that the cold basement issue that you have. Yeah, we can solve that too. We don't need to heat your floor, uh, to do that sort of thing. Right. So, uh, what what's the like what kind of uh insulation levels are you needing to hit to get passive house certification where you are because here for example at least the homes that we've been involved with uh in terms of certified homes here in ottawa they've ranged from like ours i think ours was the lowest because we just had perfect positioning it was our 73 and a half and then we were going to um I think R9 over R90 for one of the houses. So it's, it's, it's extreme. Okay. So, um, you know, the correct answer, and you'll laugh at this is the correct answer is it depends. Yeah. That's what I say to everyone. That's why so, I'm wondering what the range is. <laughs> so if you're, if you're, if you're dealing with an existing home or a new home, if you're dealing with um, continuous insulation, and, um, and, and, and truly, what is your wall assembly? Uh, so yeah. the problem is, is we have uh, a code system that's based on our value. And that our value is kind of like a Toyota test track. It has nothing to do with proper installation. And it has nothing to do with the wall assembly, as the Europeans would say, the U value. So... Uh, when you take in part the overhangs and the sun and the depth of the wall, the positioning of the window, the values of the window, all that is the real component. So short answer is I think you're going to find the walls ranging from 40 to 60. And I think you're going to find the, the, the ceilings, the roofs, depending on how they're insulated, from 70 to 90. Uh, I think a few have been a hundred and then you're going to see the slabs 
uh, be anywhere from 10 to 25 uh, mm. as an insulation. Um, but, it, but again, the real factor is if you're doing an R value and your assembly is not right or you're not doing it correctly, you just opened up a can of worms and you, you, you just created a problem that you never thought you would have. And so I tell people if they go to a building science course and they walk out of there and they're like, bam, you know, I got the silver bullet. I know how to do this. I'm like, stay away from that lady. Stay away from that guy. Right. <laughs> they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. So it depends. You got to work it. And that's what third party is all about. It's designing it on the front end. And in these networking events, these learning experiences from Illinois Green, this allows you to say, well, that guy, that guy just gave me an idea, right? This worked. This didn't work. Wow, did you see that new material? That solves all my problems. Well, tomorrow mm -hmm. there's new problems. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. So I'm glad you you brought up that because uh, I was I was curious to see like where uh, what kind of requirements you're receiving. But to, to your point, is it it really depends, right? There's going to be a huge range. Um, but here, I, I still feel like passive house is the, is the extreme for sure because we can get a really comfortable home without having to go to that extreme. Uh, and that's ultimately what we're going for. Uh, but at the end of the day, the assembly and who puts it together is extremely important. And that's why, you know, to your point is you want to make sure everyone's working together in that integrated design process, right? So homeowners, architects, energy advisors, builders, every, everybody needs, and all the trades need to be on the same page. I remember all of our sub trades when we did our first project kind of started making fun of me, but now they're all proud to be a part of all the projects that we do uh, because it's different, right? It's, it's, it's something to be proud of. It's not just like every other home that's built. Um, so that's great. So I love that you're, you're showcasing all this too. So Ashley, how has the tour, like how did the tour go for the all electric homes? Um, and like how many applicants are you getting for, for these things? Yeah, so um, Mark mentioned that on previous tours, last year we had the most homes with 18 homes, but we get we get a good number of applicants and do have to vet them out. Mark um, helps do that as well as other volunteers. This year was a little bit different because we were kind of going back and forth for a while about if it was going to happen in person or not. Um, but I think we got around 15 or so, uh, or 15 or maybe 17 applications and ended up with 13 homes. Um, so, and that was also just to try to group them into the webinars. Um, and the goal of that was to kind of make them more engaging of having a webinar focused on a specific thing, not just a bunch of people showing their homes and kind of a free for all, like having them talk more specifically. Um, so the all electric homes were for, we're showcasing four different homes actually in Chicago land area and the suburbs, um, that are all part of our ComEd, um, all electric program. Our utility has a um, has a pilot, an all-electric pilot. All these homes were part of that program. Um, and so that was really cool to have four different homes and show the difference between them um, and everything like that. So that one went really well. And um, like I said, we had presentations and we had videos. Um, and that's available to if anybody um, watching this who might not have been able to see it. We do have recordings of it. So um, we do, you guys would still be able to watch it even though um, it already happened and on July 8th. And um, we're hoping to put all of the videos of the specific homes somewhere so people can continue to get tours of them um, and see all the cool stuff that they're doing. Um, so yeah, it went really well. And then last, um, last week, because these are all throughout July on Wednesdays in July, we had the Deep Energy Retrofits, which is all renovated homes um, and they're all net zero homes. Um, so they spoke a little bit about their journey. We had ones that were uh, over a hundred year, one of the homes was over a hundred years old. Another one was um, newer, but, um, but renovated, but a newer built home. So um, kind of a wide range there, once again, to show people what they can do in their homes, especially the renovations, um, kind of make it more accessible to people. And then with this one tomorrow, or yeah, tomorrow, the passive house one, um, we were super excited about that to have three homes that are all passive house certified. That's a pretty unique thing. I don't think we've had that in previous tours. 
Um, so that was exciting. And we actually have four certified homes, but one of them was on the all electric. So um, mm -hmm. there were four certified passive house homes on the tour this year, which um, was huge since it is such a rigorous um, certification and everything. It's pretty unique to have that many. So uh, we wanted to make a, a webinar dedicated to that. And the beginning of the webinar, we'll talk more about passive house and kind of give a five minute to 10 minute presentation about it for people who might not uh, know it as well. Um, so they have that as well as then just the videos and stuff of the home. And what's the last one? Cause you have a fourth category as well coming up, right? Yeah, sorry about that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> on July 29th, which is our last one. Um, and it will be emceed by Mark Willie here. Um, he'll be our moderator and Q and A. Um, Person, so that's really exciting. Um, and that one is focused on wellness. So we have um, a home that um, has done amazing things within the, its air quality, um, which is pretty huge right now for the, this, um, this time with COVID-19 and everything. So um, that's a pretty big topic. And that's one of our homes, as well as two other homes that are more focused on high performance. So that one is called Wellness Plus High Performance, kind of talking about the mix between um, having a home that's um, a home that's good for you and is performing well to the best ability and most efficient. So that one will be next Wednesday um, at I believe 4:30 your time, uh, 3:30 um, Central. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So there's a lot going on. So is is this? Is this green, you know, sustainable building picking up more in Chicago? Like, do you feel like more people are becoming interested in it? Uh, is it picking up? Mark, obviously you've been involved for a number of years. Uh, Ashley, sorry, I'm not sure how long you've been in the green building world, but like, are you seeing an influx of people who are actually interested in that, whether it's passive or, or something different? So it's a it's it's kind of an interesting question because I have a bias, right? Um, I've been I've been doing this for a very long time, and I've always been thinking, "Oh, this is it, right? It's, it's going to take off. It's going to take off." And um, and I guess the truth is, it continues to take off. So the audience keeps growing, um, but it's certainly not mainstream. However. The, the principles and the practices are now mainstream. So I feel like in that regard, we've done our job. People do use the word green and they do have thousands of definitions for sustainability. And, and they, they don't realize it, but all of their fixtures are water sense, right? All their plywoods have no added urea formaldehyde. All their paints don't have VOCs. All their light bulbs are LED. So they don't realize it, but all those things that we were trying to even get our hands on 15 years ago are now the norm. Mm. In fact, that's, there's, there's not really an alternative. So, so while people might not be wearing the green shirt and, um, and perhaps living the natural hippie lifestyle, they're, they're living the, the tech and the healthy lifestyle. And, uh, and I, I think, I think in, that, in that regard, it's working. Code is going up. Code is constantly going up. Uh, British Columbia has the, you know, the step code, right? And, uh, the step code is just amazing. And if we get a couple cities in the States to do what, what, what's happening, um, up by you guys, it would uh, it would be monumental, mm -hmm. it, and it's and it's necessary. But um, you know, now now carbon is starting to be a normal word. You mentioned embodied energy before, so it's pretty pretty awesome that this is becoming normal. Yeah. Well, it's you know partly because of people like you, uh, you two, leading by example, right, and actually continuing to go out there and and uh, bring other people together right to show people that is possible so thank you both for for doing that uh and continuing to spread the word because that's exactly what we need right the, on, the only way we can make change is to continue to show people that it's possible and then it just 
continues to happen, right? So the, the momentum picks up and before we know it, uh, it just takes off, right? So maybe this is the time, right? <laughs> it is cool because um, I think with the tour too, there, since it, this is the eighth year, there's people who are on the tour now that attended it and just came in um, as attendees who are now having their home on the tour. So it's kind of like cool to see that. I don't know it, how much more it's taking off or whatever, but at least, you know, uh, there are certain people that once they see that it's done and get their questions asked and figure out that, you know, they can do this too. You don't have to be like Mark was saying, this like green building professional or whatever, or hippie or whatever it is. You can just, you can do it and it's on your block and it's already happening. So um, that's been pretty cool to see people who are just like, yeah, I just stumbled off the floor and now my home's here on it too. So um, it's exciting. Yeah, There's something that happened this year, Casey. Um, the National Association of Home Builders is what we have here in the U.S. and you have the CAHB. Um, the president of the organization ought to pass for all four weeks in July. Mm. that's pretty incredible, right? Um, so, of course, they know Illinois Green. They know them very well. Um, and uh, the fact that someone that busy with that much responsibility takes the time to, um, to pick up on what's being thrown down, that's amazing. Uh, yeah. So I think if, if it would have just been Saturday and Sunday in July, like we've done for seven years, he wouldn't have had that opportunity. Uh, so the fact that Illinois Green was able to pivot and all the volunteers and all those homeowners were able to say, yeah, we'll shoot video. We'll do this. We'll open up our homes. Um, so now they don't have the foot traffic and the dirty shoes in their house. But now they've created this awareness everywhere. And uh, the, the, the last house we didn't show there's one right in the, the main part of Chicago by Neil Peck, right? And it's just amazing to have these existing homes saved and transformed. So you, you don't have, Casey, you, don't, you and your audience, they don't have to use up any carbon to visit these homes. They literally go to your link, go to the hyperlink from Ashley, and there they are. Wow, yeah. a green home. Yeah, it's so good. Like this, there is a lot. Obviously, there's been a lot of uh, so-called bad things with the current times, but there is good things like what you just mentioned, right? People not having to drive to work every single day and being able to do exactly this, right? So, uh, you yeah, know, that's a, that's a really good point. So, speaking of links, so where can people go to register? You know, right now if they wanted to. Yeah, so I pulled up um, our website, but that is just at www.greenbuilt with a T hometour.org um, and you can go there and you can check out all the homes that are on the tour and the previous homes from previous tours, the previous homes from this tour that were earlier in July um, and, the rooms. and you can get tickets there as well and just read more about it. Um, and we also have um, a green pro directory which has information about the people who have been on the tour and I think that could be really helpful um, for people, that's kind of the goal is to get the information out there. So a lot of people contact us and they're like, who's a green builder or a green architect that we can talk to, like all this stuff. So that mm -hmm. a lot of information in there too, that if people have questions or want more information, you can always reach out to people within the green pro directory. Um, Cause like I said, we try to make that connection and get those questions answered and stuff like that. So um, if you visit www.greenbuilthometour.com that has um, all the info. That's great. And before we leave, do you have any advice that you would give to people who are maybe considering going on this journey to, to building a more uh, comfortable home, sustainable home, efficient home, passive home? Um, could be there from each of you, either of you. <laughs> Where to start maybe or, or yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think it, it, my advice is to, do as much as you can um, and and really just get it done like go out there get your questions asked find people who are doing things that you're interested in be able to get your questions asked so that you can really understand what's best for your home and your climate that you're in and stuff like that um because like we were talking about before it really differs where you are and there's a ton of different certifications 
Um, and if the certifications are scary, you don't need to be certified to have a green home. Um, so just being able to find people out there doing what you want to do and get those questions asked. And I think that kind of helps not feel so overwhelmed about um, all the options that are out there. So um, I say just get started in whatever way uh, you can. And even if it's baby steps, you know, like everything, everything counts. So even if it's just something small, um, start there and then move on to the next thing. Yeah, absolutely. Do you want to add that to that, Mark? Yeah, I'll, I'll give uh, the easy tagline. And you probably use the same one, Casey. Um, the greenest home is the one that already exists. So if we, if we look at our surroundings and if it happens to be in a neighborhood and community that we already know and love with our family and friends and in our market and our schools and churches, if we already have that, then what can we do? Uh, simple steps. It's not hard, but it is hard work. Um, so find the right person, do it all on paper and enjoy the process. It's just like a wedding, right? While you're planning this big event, you want to have fun and you want a honeymoon. So the fun is the finding the people and the making the decisions and the acquiring the products. And the honeymoon is your life in that building, right? It goes on and on for as long as you can enjoy it. So start with the buildings you have and, uh, and just realize there's an, never ending supply of information out there for this. It didn't used to be accessible. So now it's local. Yeah. Uh, we're very blessed in North America to have most of these products within a hundred miles of our buildings, the closer, the better. Uh, and then just do it right. If you're not sure, then don't do it. Ask more questions. The person who's doing it is unsure and they've never done that estimate even and walk through that process. It's a team environment from the architect to the builder to all the craftsmen and tradespeople. It's a unified effort to make that awesome experience. Be enjoyed, be quiet, be comfortable. Yeah, I, it's funny that you brought up the analogy of a wedding because uh, my wife and I, when we got married, I'm like, I don't plan on getting married again. I don't need to know how to plan a wedding. I'm not interested in learning how to plan a wedding. So we hired a wedding planner, right? So that's exactly what it is, is it's, it's finding that team that, that knows how to do it, or at least has been involved with enough that they can figure it out a lot quicker and they have the connections, right? Our wedding day ended up being the greatest day of our lives because we didn't, we weren't stressed. We weren't like that stressed out couple. Our family wasn't stressed because, you know, our, it was some, our mom was doing this or dad was doing that or whoever, right? It was just like everybody could enjoy the, the day and the extended weekend if they decided to stay, right? And that's what, it, you know, like you said, it's not necessarily easy, easy, but it's a process. And if you understand what's involved in the process, uh, it, it can be extremely enjoyable and definitely worth it in the end, right? Yeah. So uh, thanks so much, both of you, for being here. Uh, I, you know, the link's posted in, in the chat too, and we'll be sure to send out more and we'll get this on all the other uh, socials that we have. Um, it's been uh, very informative. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And inspiring. Thank you for leading. Thank you so much. Have a blessed week.